struggles of life gets most people to a point where they lose all hope and giving up is the only option they see. But is there ever a time when you can say that all hope is really lost? Hi there and welcome to a new season of The Untold here on Ghana Web TV. The show that aims to challenge you to be the best you can be and inspire you to overcome the seemingly huge battle ahead of you. Our guest for today, though very young, got knocked hard by life. He hit rock bottom but didn't stay there. And today, he's here to tell you that success is possible. Stay with us. My name is Chris Fafali, and uh, I was born and raised by Reverend Bemu and Lady Pastor Rosalind Bemu in Kumase. And um, we grew up in a mission house. Um, we have about five siblings, and um, I'm the eldest. So growing up, I was involved in um, church activities a lot. I was also involved in, um, in the choir, to be very specific. So I started playing the instruments from a tender age. Um, I think I was about 11 or 12 years when I started playing the instrument, musical instruments. Apart from the church issues, um, I attended St. Paul's International and then um, I also went to KSTS where I studied visual arts. Upon completion of a secondary education, Chris enrolled at NIIT to study network engineering. His father was transferred to Petoy in the Volta region and because of his education, he couldn't join his family to their new abode. So he had to move in with an uncle. Without informing any family member, Chris packed bag and baggage and moved to Accra when he completed NIIT because he wanted to explore. Moving to a city where he knew absolutely no one, Chris spent his first night in front of a restaurant at Kokomlimli. I left Kumasi to Accra um, on my own exploration. Like I wanted to know how the outside world is. It has always been Mission House Church School, Mission House Church School all the time. So I had this design me to come outside and see what's happening um, outside Kumasi. I didn't tell anyone. My parents didn't know about it. My dad didn't know about it. The issue was reported um, on TV. I watched it in a cry here, but then I didn't call anybody back. And um, they kept searching for me. When I got to Circle around 9 p.m. at night, I walked all the way from Circle to Kokonumli, where I slept at one restaurant. And then the, the next day, I continued my journey to um, Malaka Market, that's Newtown. So when I got to Malaka Market, I met a group of um, other people who have also left their places to come and hustle in Accra. So we were, in, we were about um, six in number. And um, some of them were purposely there to work, to where rewrite their papers and get back to school again. Others were just in to hustle and take care of themselves. And then um, others also have their own agenda. But mine was to come and work and then get back to school again. So when I came to Accra, I met some few Nigerians. Um, and I met a Nigerian friend, a friend of course, um, who was also in the marketplace with us, and um, it's called Chinedu. At the market, I was a head porter, so we used to carry things for people, especially when um, vegetables and um, um, produce come from the villages to the marketplace. We carry them to their sheds, to the various sheds. At night. The arresting place was in front of shops around the market and whilst resting after a hard day's work, Chinedu suggested they move to Nigeria as the job they were doing here in Ghana was more lucrative there. Prior to leaving for Nigeria, Chris called his family to let them know he was alive and well, the first time he had done that since he left the house. I called back home and told them that I'm leaving to Nigeria to go and hustle over there. So they asked me where I was exactly, and I even told them I was at um, Winneba, No, I was in Accra. Um, and that was it. Um, one night we left Accra, I left with Chinibu, we took um, the ABC transport, and then we went to um, Lagos. We stayed in Lagos for some time, and then we moved to um, Kaduna. I stayed in Kaduna for a while, and then, um, we moved on to Kanu and then we ended at Ushun. 
So at Ushun, um, he took me to a mini market where we met other traders and we were also working there again as um, headquarters. After hustling as a headporter in Nigeria for a while, Shinedu introduced Chris to a man who transported barrels of cowhide to Burkina Faso and Mali and he joined the business. He was however unaware that some of the barrels they were transporting contained illegal drugs and narrowly escaped the police on his last trip with the group. In Nigeria, if you, you are not, um, as we say, if you are not wild, um, you either become um, um, a prey or the predator predator you know so on our trip one night we went to uh, we we're going to um, Burkina and um, our car developed a fault so we were all sleeping around the car and I overslept and they left me yes they left me so there was this hunter who came in and asked me about what was going on and I, I told him every story and um, he took me to the next filling station and then I got money the next day and went back to the show where I was staying. Then only to get a notification that um, my colleagues were, have been arrested. Um, the barrels they were sending to Burkina, some of them had um, um, drugs in it, which I didn't know. So I would say I was just lucky that um, I, I didn't get arrested. And to be very frank, I didn't know what was in it. So when I go back to Ushun, um, I have to pack my things and leave Nigeria and come back to Ghana again to continue my education. Upon his return to Ghana, Chris got into KNUST to study communication designs and started a business selling ladies' beads, panties, and other products on campus. After graduating from school, he opened his first banco and tilapia business at Angloga Junction in Kumase. But that was short-lived. I was just selling one day when um, the space owner came and told me that her daughter wants to sell the same products I'm selling at my place, so I should leave. Some of the business strategies or techniques I was using was when people um, buy from me, I added some few things to the bank. I didn't only sell the bank. Um, sometimes I'll add PK or maybe some um, mint toffee and then I also tied um, liquid soap in the size of um, sugar. I saw someone doing that in Nigeria, that was where I learned it from. So it was also by the roadside, around 4.30 and 5, there is always traffic and um, we stood in the street and then we also sold to people. We had banks coming around, we had people coming around. I cooked the bank myself and I also grilled the fish myself. So I did that for a while till the woman told me that we have to move from um, the space. After the sudden end of his banquet business, Chris spent some time lecturing at NIIT, then Kumasi Polytechnic, where salaries were delayed for several months due to a technical problem. When the problem was finally rectified and the salaries paid, he resigned and returned to Accra. What actually led me to Accra here was a friend of mine who was actually watching my space on Facebook. He realized I was doing a lot. I had an NGO called, um, I, which I still have, IK Foundation. And um, IK Foundation, what we actually do is um, we support education in the rural communities. We have our, about 13 SD, uh, SDGs, um, which maybe we will talk about it later. So we've been traveling to um, the deepest and remotest um, um, areas um, across the country. We've been to Libinkura, Kabupe, Bupe, Navrungo, we've been to Denchirobwase, we've been to Dabala, and um, a whole lot of places to do donations. So this friend of mine asked me to come to Accra, and then um, once we are in Accra, we will have access to the ministries, we will have access to other people who would like to come on board and support what we are doing. So I came to Accra and I was staying with them um, at Taifa. And that was where I started my food business again in Taifa. Um, I opened a branch also at um, Latebi Okoshi. And then also opened another branch at Dansuma. And then started another one at um, Osu. Yes. And um, alongside, I was still doing my graphic designing job. I was doing everything that I was doing. And because I had a musical background, I was also doing the music production. People called me to the studios to produce um, for them. 
And um, just to fast forward everything, um, an incident happened where he called me one day and told me that a political party needed some souvenirs. So they needed some T-shirts, they needed um, flyers, they needed um, some few things. So he got a contract for me, which I did. But then uh, we know with government contracts, you have to pre-finance before they bring in the money. Trusting his friend was the biggest mistake Chris made at the time, as it led to the collapse of his businesses. I saw him to be a friend, so um, I started the business with what I had on me. But then um, it rather went to the detriment of my business collapsing. Um, we started the business and uh, the contract, and when he went for the money, he ran away with the money to Liberia, and it was a very huge sum of money. Um, at the end of the day, my businesses collapsed because I couldn't pay my workers. Um, those who also heard that um, this was the issue we were having, it became a legal issue, like police getting involved, and at the end of the day, all the businesses collapsed. Um, this issue went to the extent of me um, nearly committing suicide, yes, because um, that was my only hope, you know, that was my only hope. Within that period, when that issue was, um, before the issue came, I had also, um, of course, I'm getting emotional. Powers and principalities. There's so much fire inside me. Tragedy struck when part of the largest hillside at the kosher rubbish dump collapsed. It's going to be fun to see how he goes about approaching this game. I was staying at Usu when the whole issue happened and at the end of the day I couldn't pay my rent, um, I lost my businesses, I had a music studio in the house, um, right intermittently like within that period too was when the lockdown came. So I left a crowd to stay with my family because um, I had a whole lot of things going on at the same time. Um, when I left to Sunyani to stay with my family. I stayed there for a while, by the time I came back to Accra, that was when I realized my place had been broken into. Um, they made away with my machines, my computers, almost everything that I had. I had a photo studio in the house. It was just a, a small room, but then I had everything um, in there. So some of my items were stolen. A few months later, my rent was also due, and I couldn't pay my rent. So I was evicted from the house. Chris couldn't call his family for help because he's the eldest child and didn't want to be a burden to them. He had to resort to sleeping in his church as Accra was still in lockdown and the people he expected to encourage him through this difficult time rather mocked him. I slept in our church. I was sleeping in our church and um, they gave me a place to sleep over there. That was within the, 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 the lockdown period. Church was about to resume and I still didn't have money to rent a place. That month was also um, my daughter's birthday and I've not seen my daughter for more than nine years. Um, the last time I saw her she was just three months, you know. Um, so looking at that period where I miss my daughter so much, my businesses have collapsed, um, the gadgets and equipment I had, I've, I've lost all of them. And um, I, I had a lot of bills I was still paying because I had not paid some of my workers. And I've lost all my shops too, within that period. I felt like I'm useless, you know. I felt like I'm useless. Um, people I expected to, like I expected them to encourage me within that period. Um, that was when they called me hopeless. 
explaining why he hasn't been able to see his daughter for the last nine years, Chris said he lost the woman he loved because her pastor said he had a spirit of poverty. When um, I left um, university at that period, I did my national service and then started working with a printing press um, at um, um, Asafu in Kumasi. That was where I met one lady, a very nice, beautiful lady. And um, we started our relationship, everything was okay. Um, three months into our relationship, she asked me to come to their church. She would like to, she wanted to introduce me to their pastor. So she introduced me to the pastor and then um, I was asked to go and play the keyboard because I played the instruments too. I was just behind the keyboard one night, one evening at service when the pastor came in said um, God has revealed something to him and he called me in front of the church and um, the lady was around, the family was also around and um, she told the church that God has revealed to him that I have the spirit of poverty in my house and um, if the lady should marry me, her life and her family will be destroyed. It was a, bit, a big blow to me because I know we are not poor, you know. I couldn't bear it. So to me, I know God reveals to redeem. And if you've seen any revelation, you've seen anything about me, um, I have much expected that the pastor would sit down with me and um, talk to me and we pray together. Few weeks after the prophecy came, the so-called prophecy came, I called my, my woman and I told her that my dad wants to see her. And, um, we need to pray about this. She didn't want to come. Close to a month, she wasn't picking my calls again. I would call and call and call and call. She would never pick my call. And later on, I realized she has left her family to stay with the pastor, the so-called pastor. So I asked her, why is she now staying with the pastor? And she told me that um, the pastor came to see her family, that she is following wrong footsteps, and he needs to mentor her. So the family allowed her to come and stay with the pastor. The pastor who is not married, the pastor you are staying in the same room, it's just, it was just a single room, because I went to the house to see where they were staying. This whole thing was just turning into something and um, it was having an, um, an, an emotional and psychological toll on me, so um, I stopped following up. After nine months, Chris's ex came back begging and he accepted to be with her again. But even impregnating her was not a reason good enough to get her family's blessings for marriage. She came back and apologized to me that She was sorry for breaking up with me and um, she would like to come back for us to get back into relationship. So she came back and that was when I realized she had something to do with the pastor. The pastor actually slept with her. I forgive her. I forgive her right there. And um, I felt okay, now we are back into a relationship again. So later on, she moved to stay with me. And um, after two years, um, I impregnated her. In my plan, I had really wanted to see the family for us to get married and then um, the right way, do everything the right way before pregnancy comes in. But then, I was having external challenges from her family because they didn't like my tribe. I'm a vegetarian, and they are Ashantis. And um, to them, they feel like they come from a royal home. And if any outsider should join their family, um, it's going to create problems for them. So long story short, I took care of the pregnancy. Um, I took responsibility of it till she delivered. I went and then did the christening, the naming. 
After I was done with the naming, she called me back and told me that the family said they don't want me in their family. So we should break up. I took the issue to um, Doftu and told them that um, this is what has happened. So they invited her over and spoke to her about the whole issue and told them that they shouldn't deprive me from seeing my daughter. It's nine years now I've never seen my daughter. The burden was too much and Chris almost ended his life. So one day when I was sleeping at the church, um, all these emotions um, came back um, on me again and I was like, what am I using my life for? I start this business, it collapses, I start that and it turns into something else. So that night I moved to a friend's um, drinking sports and um, I actually bought alcohol that night and um, the poison on me which I poured into the drink. I was just about to take it and I posted um, a suicidal note on Facebook that that was it. And before that I had already inboxed some few people and told them about my um, psychological issues and the problems, challenges I was facing. You know people misuse the internet to defraud people, to scam up, um, people. So the few people I spoke to felt like um, I was just trying to come up with a story to keep them. Right about the time when I was going to take the poison, that was when um, one of my choristers um, appeared. People were looking for me. And at that moment, I had so much calls coming in that my phone um, um, went off. But then as to how that chorister of mine knew where I was at the moment, <laughs> it was never close to me. He came and slapped me with a glass and picked me out and then uh, he took me to the check premise. Within some few seconds, I mean, within some few minutes, I realized there were lots of cars parked at the church. Lots of people came around to check up on me to see what exactly was going on. Um, hmm. That night I could have lost my life, but then I, um, God saved me that night. A Facebook friend who chanced upon the suicide note on social media offered Chris a room in his house until he gets back on his feet. I stayed with Jerry for a while and that was when I started making savings towards starting a new business and starting a new life afresh. Right between that time too, I had um, someone from Lekma who was also um, a cyber family or a cyber friend, a friend from the internet who invited me over to the hospital. So I started my therapy with um, the lady at um, Lekma. And um, sometimes we go biblical, sometimes we chat more. And um, she was also um, of help to me a lot. With no knowledge in welding, Chris started a fabrication business whilst he was staying with Jerry, and that was the birth of Wenhock. One morning, I posted a table on Facebook um, called Z Table. I do 3D visualization. I'm into um, graphics too. I do 3D animation and stuff like that. So um, I saw this picture on, on Instagram and it was a very nice table. And um, I tried doing the design um, with my PC, and I realized this is something that um, I can mold and just post because I'm part of an animation group on WhatsApp. So we sometimes post our work for credits. But then I realized if I have to mold all these things just for credits and I can't make money out of it, then um, where am I heading towards with my um, um, 3D profession? So I molded the table and then the software gave me all the dimensions, the angles, the cuttings and everything. And when I posted the, the, the picture on Facebook, I, within one hour I had about 200 plus people asking for the table because they want to buy one. And I didn't know how to weld from anywhere. I've not been to any welding school. I've not been to any technical school to know anything about this. But then that night I prayed to God that He should just give him the knowledge and the know-how of how to do this. So when I was staying with Jerry, I would um, go to the welding shops, buy metals, send them metal pipes, send them to those places, and then I give them the dimensions. 
it was I had a laptop and I had it amazing zone. The laptop they will cut and then they will just, just wear it and then we will grind and then spray. So I posted a first picture on Facebook and the people were still asking for the table that they want to buy more. And I realized this could be a very good venture to get into because I had um, great comments coming from people. I invested the money I had that time into it and um, that is how come I started my fabrication job. So I would bring in welders to come and weld, sprayers to come and spray and um, any other person who could play a part in um, making the job possible, I bring them on board to do that. Along the line I was also learning to weld and um, as I speak to you right now, I weld my own works. I spray them myself, I do everything myself within the period of six months, years. And um, we've been getting a lot of contracts. People have been calling us to um, mold restaurant tables for them. Schools have been calling. Um, recently we had a hospital asking us to mold about 100 bank beds for them, which we are going to start very soon. And um, there are a whole lot of projects we've been doing. Um, I'm also into architecture. I do architectural drawings and stuff for people. And um, this is the future of Wainhawk. I know someone would ask, um, why Wainhawk? Looking at the storms I've gone through, um, yes, the eagle, people say, is the strongest bird. But I realized one thing about the hawks. Hawks are very swift and fast. When they envision a vision, or when they see a vision, they will make sure they hover around until they get what they want before they fly away. And um, this is the attribute of what, or what I've characterized myself to be that when I see an idea, I make sure I catch that idea, materialize it, and actually make it happen. Chris hopes to build various companies under the Winhawk brand and believes he will succeed. I have a whole lot of businesses coming up. Um, Winhawk is just uh, one out of six of the businesses I have under Winhawk. And with the food business too, we have about um, four businesses under the food business. Uh, we also have other businesses too we have in plan and um, I'm still working around them. So for instance, with the rain hole, just as I said earlier on, I want to test the soil, know the field, know the technical aspect of it. Yes, I know right now we have artificial intelligence in welding, we have um, robotic welding and all those, those kind of stuff, but then you need to really know the basics, learn it the classical way before you get into modern technology. So with the food business, yes, I'll get back into it again. What is his driving force, we ask? First of all, it has been God. And um, I quite remember one night I was um, in South Africa. We, we closed from church and um, I got robbed. At that very moment, I realized I didn't know anyone in South Africa. It has been the same way when I was living in Nigeria. And um, it has been God all this while. I would have lost my life then. But then the music I know was what I was feeding on. And I learned music from the house of God. All right. Now, when it comes to my physical capabilities or my human capabilities, anytime I fail, I feel like um, it's an opportunity for me to learn and then know my mistakes and then rectify them. So when I saw the food and then the, the business collapsed, I felt like, okay, now this is what has happened. Next time I'm starting a food business again, how do I go about it? And that was how I was able to start four businesses in Accra to go. You understand me? One business collapsed, but I started four in Accra. So anytime I fail, it serves as um, an opportunity for me to correct my mistakes and then move on. I'm someone who multitasks. I do a whole lot of things at the same time. And um, that's how God created me. You know, Growth takes time. But then if you grow and go through it, that's when the results come. There is this um, thing we see in tree that um, Epochra and Sotogun. Bill Gates is still searching for money. Dangote is still searching for money. All right. Um, I appreciate where I am now. I've not made it yet, but I appreciate what, what I'm doing now and where I am now. I'm learning a lot when it comes to 
um, customer service, interaction with people, I'm learning a lot. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I've been through all these things and I still have my, my skills intact. I thank God for where I am. He had a word of advice for young people who aim to become entrepreneurs. Life is not easy. All right. Life is not easy. Um, one thing I've realized about the youth of our generation, education is very good. Getting a certificate is very good. Working at the office is very good. But then there is money on the street. There is money on the street. Somebody has been to the university and studied marketing. Now you are back home. You have carpenters and tailors and tradesmen around you who are struggling to market their products and you have studied marketing in school. Why don't you collaborate with some of these people? Create a social media platform or page. Help them sell their products and make your money too. But then it seems everyone is just waiting to be employed into an air-conditioned office with a very big sum of, um, a very nice um, salary, handsome salary, and um, always putting in a suit, you know. Here I am. I have my business. I have my education, but then I have my business. There is money on the street. I made a post on Facebook some time ago that if someone should sell um, five bags of water a day, I will try and get you um, that post. At the end of the year, you should make about um, um, 120,000 Ghana cities at the end of the year. But if you should tell um, an elite or an educated, an educated person to go and sell water on the street, they will never sell it. But these people are making big money. So with the little education that you have and then the little skills on the street, you can create a business on your own and make things happen. For the struggles, it will come. Money to fund your business, it's not easy. You will not get sponsorship from anywhere. But as an entrepreneur, if you need to buy a machine, you need to buy a chair, you need to buy anything, it has to come from your own pocket. Time and patience, time and patience is very, very important. story is one that really needed to be heard and we believe you have been inspired by it. Until we come your way again with another untold inspiring story, do well to visit www.ghanaweb.com for all your latest news. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel Ghana Web TV to watch all our programs. My name is Dokas Ankum.